Every bull cycle needs a certain country to either dive into the crypto markets full on or pull the plug on them, pumping the markets to the moon or crashing them down to the ground. Who is that country? Well, my friends, it's China. 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 And this country has played a major part in Bitcoin's bull run and bull cycles since the beginning. So what's China up to this cycle? We'll find out in about 10 minutes because it's time for Chico Crypto. Yes, my friends, if you didn't know, China plays a big role in Bitcoin and the entire crypto ecosystem. What they decide to do, their government and the people of China has major effects on the industry as a whole. If you weren't around or don't remember, back in May of 2021, China decided to crash the crypto markets by banning cryptocurrency mining and trading within the country. As we can see, this crashed the price from nearly $60,000 in early May all the way down to 30 k two months later in July of that year. Basically a 50% crash in just two months. And this isn't the first time China did something like this. Back during the 2017 bull market mania, China did another type of crypto ban. They declared ICOs illegal within the country. As we can see from the price, BTC crashed from nearly 5,000 bucks all the way down to 3,000, a crash of about 40% in just two weeks. Each of these bans weren't total bans on cryptocurrencies. That's just how they were perceived during the time, leading to larger than normal crashes. If you didn't know, people within China are still participating in ICOs and newer types of token offerings like IEOs, airdrops, and IDOs. Also, that China ban on Bitcoin mining? Well, over two years later, China is still the number two mining country by hash rate. China in the past has dumped the markets with jolting headlines about crypto bans, but the past is a past. We are moving into the future, and this time around, it is likely China will pump the crypto markets. Why do I think this? Well, many people don't know exactly what is going on within mainland China. What is the status of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency within the country? So let us begin with China's ban on Bitcoin mining. Liu He, who was Xi Jinping's right-hand man and vice premier of the state, was the one who publicly ordered the Bitcoin mining ban. Well, guess who decided to step down and retire in March of this year? Liu He did. Now that he is out of office and pulling the strings, it's unlikely that Bitcoin will return to a ban level event like it did in 2021, as Xi's state administration focuses on battles of other systems, like investment flows to and from the East and West. People also don't realize and recognize the legal status of crypto and Bitcoin within China. It's really not as bad as it seems. Bitcoin is actually recognized as virtual property and a defensible virtual commodity by Chinese courts. And this has been the case in the court system on many occasions for many years. From this legal research paper titled, A General Introduction to the Regulation of Virtual Currencies in China from Hankun Law Offices in China, they say, Nevertheless, other courts have been permissive towards virtual currencies and related activities in certain aspects such as by holding. Like number one, virtual currencies are virtual commodities that possess economic value and thus their private exchange between persons do not violate the key prohibition rules. And number two, purchase agreements in respect of virtual currency trading are valid as they do not violate mandatory legal requirements or public policies. And then below, they document the cases that upheld these two legal statuses for virtual currencies below. The right for Chinese citizens to hold and buy Bitcoin as virtual commodities has been upheld by multiple courts, and the right for the citizens to transact 
P2P has been upheld as well. Yeah, China has banned exchanges on their mainland from transacting with citizens in cryptocurrency, and they've banned companies within their borders from raising funds through crypto assets but they haven't banned the people's right to transact and hold crypto. So let me tell you, friends, we're about to see China use crypto like never before. And this can be seen from Chainalysis's recent crypto report, the Global Crypto Adoption Index. We can see from this report in 2022, China was ranked number two on centralized services, aka a lot of money on centralized exchanges was coming from China. But as we can see, their P2P person to person trading ranking was low, low back in 2022. They were ranked number 144. Checking out the same report, but in 2023, we see some shocking details. China is still up high regarding centralized services at number five, but a major change has happened regarding P2P transactions. China went from rank 144 all the way up to number 13 in just a year. China is still using centralized exchanges, but also China is starting to dominate in the person to person game. Now, if you didn't know, many of the top exchanges out there are either headquartered or have operations in Hong Kong, China's financial capital sandbox. Exchanges like Bybit, OKX, Binance, Gate.io, and KuCoin, plus many, many others. These exchanges still allow Chinese citizens to trade on them. For example, within OKX documentation about options, they talk about China mainland KYC and the minimum capital requirements for trading. OKX and some others are continuing to allow Chinese to trade on them. But this has been kind of risky for them to do this. There isn't a clear answer from the government if this is okay or not. But trading for centralized exchanges for Chinese citizens is about to get a whole lot clearer and easier with what Hong Kong has been doing. Back in the summer of 2023, Hong Kong started doing some very, very interesting moves. They decided to allow crypto exchange licenses within the country and would start accepting applications in June of 23. Well, it didn't take long. Within a couple of months, two exchanges won the licenses and could offer crypto services to retail participants. But shortly after Hashkey and others got these licenses, the big dogs started to come for their own licenses. OKX submitted in November their own application. The road is getting paved for China to be able to go full throttle into cryptocurrencies once again. Hong Kong is just a sandbox for China, a place where they can test things before deploying them on their mainland. Chinese whales are already trading on the Hong Kong exchanges, and retail China won't be far behind, even though a majority of them haven't stopped trading within the borders of China, even with the bans. Although there is some even bigger news that just came out yesterday. After seeing the success of Bitcoin ETFs here in the United States with billions upon billions of trading volume and hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin being accumulated by the funds, China started to get a tad bit jealous. So their financial hub, Hong Kong, is going to do something about it. Back in December of 2023, the Hong Kong regulators, the Securities and Futures Commission, and their monetary authority said ETF applications will be considered. Well, just a month after this, SFC, who would approve ETFs in Hong Kong, accepted their first application. And as we can see, 10 other financial institutions in the country plan to put forward their own applications. But then the article says this. Harvest Hong Kong, one of China's largest fund managers, submitted a spot Bitcoin ETF application to the Hong Kong SFC on January 26, reported Tencent News. The report added that the regulatory body is actively working to expedite the process for approval of ETFs in the country to launch the first Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETF 
after the Chinese New Year on February 10. Whoa, an ETF launched within the next couple of weeks in China that would allow citizens of mainland China to invest in Bitcoin because this would be traded on the traditional stock market. And mainland China has access to Hong Kong stock market trading. Things for Bitcoin in China are not looking bearish, but extremely bullish. What do you think? Well, let me know down in the comments. Cheers, viewers. I'll see you next time. The most trustless name in